The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hiya, Casey. What's a good word? Framus on the Cranifran. Framus on the Cranifran? Huh? Hey, what kind of talk is that? That's double talk. Huh, Tony? Well, I don't know anything about double talk, but I know good single talk when I hear it. What's good single talk? Well, straight facts like this. Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, The Blonde Lipstick. Nine o'clock in the evening at the Blue Note Cafe. It's too early for the late crowd, and the daily crowd has gone on to dinner. The place is practically deserted when... Hi, Ethelbert. Greetings, Ethelbert. Casey, Miss Williams. Two bottles of beer, pal. Coming up. Here you are, Casey. I was hoping you'd drop in. Huh? Why? What's up? Well, there was a dame looking for you. A dame? Who was she? I don't know her name because she didn't mention it, but... She really was no dame. She was class. Class of 1898? Oh, no, Miss Williams. She was young. And when I say a girl has class, I mean she had... Well, it's not what she had. It's the way she used it. You know, class. I take it, Ethelbert, she was good-looking. Yeah. Well, what's she want with me? I don't know, Casey. Not that I didn't inquire. She comes in and asks me if I would point out Casey, the photographer for the Morning Express. Uh Uh-huh. With a note of regret in my voice, I says, I would if I could, lady, but uh, Casey ain't among those present. Oh, then you probably said, is there anything I can do for you, lady? Yeah, how'd you know? Well, you told me she was very pretty. Sure. Oh, now, wait a minute, Casey. I wasn't trying to cut in on you. Uh I only asked her, is there anything I can do for you? And she says to me, oh, no, I wanted to see... Mr. Casey, it's uh, rather personal. So I told her you'd be around about this time, and she said she'd come back. So you don't know her angle? She didn't have no angle, Miss Williams. Well, she sounded more like she admired Casey from afar. (laughs) Don't choke, Annie. What's so funny about that? Oh, be your age, Casey. Well, she did tell Ethelbert that her business was personal. Oh, and the way she said it. Men can tell about things like that. Well, it might be a case of hero worship, you know. Lots of girls go for big names. <laughs> well, stick around and see. Maybe after all, I'm not a... Casey. What? What's the matter, Ethel? She's here. Yeah? The one near the door. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That's what I said when I first seen her. Shall I call her over? Ethelbert, do not delay fate. Okay. She sees me. She's coming over. Annie, how do we look? Oh, nothing wrong that a tailor and a barber couldn't fit. <laughs> right here, miss. Uh, this is Mr. Casey I'm pointing to, but I, I didn't get your name. My name's Laura Neely, Mr. Casey. I, I hope you'll excuse me, but I just had to meet you. It's a pleasure, Miss Neely. Oh, this is Miss Williams, an acquaintance. <laughs> yes. Mr. Casey has no friends. Oh, I read that honest newspaper men can't afford to make friends. Oh, you're just as I pictured you, Mr. Casey. Uh, really? Uh, well, I don't go building up any romantic ideas about me, Miss Neely. Oh, but it's true. Well, you reach the public every day. You have great power for good or evil, for influence. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, you wanted to see me about something? Something uh, personal, Miss Neely? Oh, yes, Mr. Casey. It, it's very personal to me. Oh, that's all right. You see, I want some publicity. P- publicity? Oh, you see, I'm working for a certain charity, Mr. Casey, and I know that if you give me publicity with pictures in the newspaper, I'm bound to collect a lot of money. Yeah, I'll bet. Don't you think, Mr. Casey? Uh, not at the moment, Miss Neely. I think Mr. Casey is nursing a case of severe disappointment. 
Pardon me. Is that what you've been hanging around for, some free publicity? Oh, but it's not for myself, Mr. Casey. It's for a worthy cause. Oh, I know, I know, the old story. How do you want your picture, in a bathing suit? Oh, Mr. Casey, you don't understand. This is a very worthy cause. Oh, I know, yeah. Sure, yeah, getting a picture in the paper is the first step in interesting some movie producer. No, I'm sorry, Miss Neely, no go. Oh, you've really got me all wrong. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the City Welfare Fund, and I thought that as a newspaper man... What did you say? I'm working for the City Welfare Fund. I think everybody should help, well, and why I why didn't thought... you say so instead of beating around the bush? You mean, you'll help? Well, I'd be glad to help with the City Welfare Fund any time. Oh. But every newspaper's collecting for the fund. What's your special angle? Oh, well, you know how people are, Mr. Casey. They intend to send a contribution, but they just never get around to it. But I call on them after work, and they're glad to give. Would you give all your time to collecting? Oh, as much as I can. You see, I work for the Stevens Electrical Company. Uh -huh. After work, I visit people evening. That's not a bad angle, you know. Look, I'll do a series of shots of you getting donations from prominent people. Annie, look, how, how does this strike you? I'll snap Laura getting a donation from Logan behind his desk at police headquarters. I'm filled with enthusiasm at the novel. Good, we'll start right here and now. Come on, Ethelbert, kick in. <laughs> Hello, Annie. How's the news department? Mm, fine, Casey. One murder, two arsons, and a nightclub fight between two movie stars. In other words, I'm not writing up that baby face space grabber. Well, now, Annie, she's collecting for the city welfare fund. Mm, collecting a lot of glory for herself. Well, so what? She's working for it, isn't she? Every newspaper guy I sent her to has made a donation, even though he'd already given before. You know that Laura's collected over $10,000 already? Yeah, it must be that perfume she was sporting. Twilight in Paris. Guaranteed to land your man. Oh, look, why don't you give the gal a break, Annie? She's okay. Oh, is she? Well, um, I've tried, Casey, but I don't go for her. Well, why not? The way you hate her. Well, I don't hate her. Well, all right, the way you dislike her, then. Well, there isn't any reason for well, it. I knew I'd dislike her before I met now, her. that's what I mean. Well, Williams, city room, police desk. May I speak to Mr. Casey, please? Yeah, just a moment. For you, Casey. Huh? For me? Oh, don't get up, Annie. Hello, Casey speaking. Uh, my name is Thomas Stevens, Mr. Casey, huh? uh, president of the Stevens Electrical Company. It sounds familiar, Mr. Stevens, but... Uh, uh... Miss Laura Neely is my secretary. Oh, yes, Laura mentioned you. And she told me about you, Mr. Casey. You've been helping her collect funds for the city welfare fund? Well, Laura does all the work, really. But you are very much interested, aren't you, Mr. Casey? Naturally, I want to see the fund get as much as possible. Then I'd better tell you, Mr. Casey, I... I really don't know whether I should call the police The or... police? What happened? Well, there may be nothing to it, but on the other hand... Laura left the office with over $10,000 in cash, which she was going to take to the bank. When? What time? During her lunch hour. at 1 o'clock. That's four hours ago. Yes, yes. She hasn't returned. I didn't think anything of it at first, but then I began worrying. Well, did you check with the bank? Did Laura deposit the money? I called the bank, but she hasn't been there. I'm afraid she's... Well, it could have been an accident or, or anything, but what she had $10,000 with her. What shall I do? Call the police? No. Hold everything for a while. I'll check at this end, and uh, I'll call you back in an hour or so. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Casey. Goodbye. Hey, I only heard your side of the conversation, Casey, but it doesn't sound good. I should say not. Laura Neely left her office for the bank with more than $10,000 in donations at 1 o'clock. It's after 5 now. She never got there. Ha! Huh. Check the bus and railroad terminals. Huh? Hey, wait a minute, Annie. That's unfair, really. Laura wouldn't run off with that dough. So I'm catty. But where's Laura? And more important, where's that $10,000? Yeah, that's what worries me. Laura could have been followed and robbed. Casey, I'm working a police desk, remember? I'd be the first one to get a report on a robbery or assault. Well, she might be hurt, Annie. She may be unconscious in some hospital right now. You know I get the accident reports, too, and nothing doing, Casey. Now, you better start thinking up excuses. Excuses for what? I'll state the case as simply as I can. You meet a girl at the Blue Note. You don't know a thing about her. Wait a minute. If I can't judge a person's character after all these years... Stick to I... men, Casey. You don't know a thing about women. I should know. I haven't been able to teach you a thing. Like what? Well, we'll go into that some other time. Right now, you've accepted a strange girl at face value. You introduce her to all your newspaper friends. You practically force them to give her money. What does that make you with all the boys? The biggest sucker in town. Well, I'll still bet my last dollar that Laura's honest. Face the facts, Casey. You were taken for a ride. Now, what are you going to tell the boys? Nothing. Oh, well, they'll be telling you plenty. Well, not until they find out. Look, so far, her boss, Stevens, is the only one who knows that Laura's missing. That gives me a chance to find her. Well, you'll need police help. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess I will at that. Come on, I'll ring up Logan. Well, look, Annie, I'm... give me the phone. I'll... I'll talk to him. Maybe you better let me do it. You did get Logan to pose for a picture with Laura. And it won't look very well when the story breaks. I'll take my own medicine if I have to. Still not sold in the idea that Laura ran out, though. Uh, hello, police headquarters. Hello, Logan. This is Casey. Now, now, listen carefully and save your comments until I'm through. Laura Neely has disappeared with over $10,000 she collected. Come in, Miss Williams. How are you, Captain? Fine. And who's the gentleman with you? Oh, cut the comedy, Logan. Uh, the gentleman is Mr. Casey. Ah, uh, impossible. Oh? Why, Captain Logan? Because a certain photographer named Casey wouldn't dare show his face around here. Not after what he's done to me. Go ahead, rub it in. Now, what'd you expect me to do? Roll out the welcome mat for the guy who's made me the laughing stock of the police department? Every paper in town's gonna dig up the picture of me handing a donation to Laura Neely. And are they gonna go to town? Quote. Captain Logan gives official sanction to bunco game, unquote. Now, hold on, Logan. I'll admit it looks bad, bad for Laura. Oh, now, but... and you'll also admit that Hitler might have been guilty, I suppose. When you cut the sarcasm, we might get to work. Laura disappeared. She was carrying ten grand. Well, now, lots of guys in this town could knock her off, unless... Why don't you investigate before you jump to conclusions? You know, Casey, the same thing occurred to me, too. I did investigate. Did you find out anything? Not much. Laura Neely was making $55 a week. And last week, she buys $970 worth of dresses. Well, so what? Every girl saves for clothes? Oh, sure. But Laura's personal bank account was $200. She didn't touch that. And on top of the $970 for dresses, she spent $300 for two suits and bought $150 worth of luggage. When I got all those reports, I began to suspect that Laura might have been preparing for a trip. How about the uh, railroad and bus terminals? Well, my boys checked them, but not a trace. Well, you see, now. But I found the record of an automobile sale in her name. Yesterday, Laura bought a blue convertible roadster from a second-hand dealer. Today, she's gone. She... she bought a car, huh? Uh, pick her up fast in a blue convertible. Not many of them on the road. So we pick her up, then what? We put her on trial, and the whole story comes out how she took the wise boys in town, the newspaper men and the police. All right, all right. I'll take the blame for that, Logan. The boys will be glad to pass the buck to me. But um, if you take all the blame, Casey... What else can I do, Annie? I fell for a story. I introduced her around. Well, it might... It would be pretty hard to live it down. <laughs> Who's worried? Yeah, I can always get a job. Who says I've got to be a crime photographer? I can go around snapping baby pictures. Logan, I, I'm afraid for him. Uh, he'll blow his top and then calm down. Well, I'd better stay with him. If Casey ever needed me, he needs me now. Our story will continue in just a moment. Say, Tony, who collects and returns all the empty beer bottles in your house, you or Junior? Empty beer bottles? Mm -hmm. Well, say, hasn't anybody told you about the new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit, no-return bottle? Say, that's right. There's no need to save one-way bottles. No deposit is required. You never have to return them to the store. And they're a tremendous convenience, too. So light, so compact, and they take up so little space in the refrigerator. And the Anchor Glass one-way bottle is a glass bottle. And because it's a glass bottle, it brings you beer and ale that taste as beer and ale should taste. Unaffected by foreign flavors. Clean, clear, sparkling. Beer that's brewery bright. No deposit, no fuss, no empties to be returned to the store. And when you've enjoyed the beer, you dispose of the empty bottle as you would any other food container. You are the first and the last to use it. Yes, and that's why the new sanitary anchor glass one-way no deposit bottle is sweeping America. And that's why, when you buy beer, you should say that you want your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Sorry, I'm in a hurry, Ann. Oh, now, Casey, I'm going with you. Why should you? Well, I've, I've helped before. I don't need any help. I'm sorry, Annie. 
What are friends for? Thanks, kid. Wasn't I always? Sure. Thanks, Casey. Now, what are we going to do? I've got to find that blonde. Well, the police will pick her up. Oh, sure they will. Sure. But I've got to get to her first, Danny. If this story ever gets in the papers... Well, what can you do? Well, the way I figure is, if Laura was getting ready to leave town, she might have dropped some hint to somebody. Well, she doesn't have any family that we know of. Her boss was probably closer to her than anybody else. At least he may have a lead to girlfriends or boyfriends. I'm going to call on Thomas Stevens right now. <laughs> Make yourselves comfortable in the library. I'll tell Mr. Stevens you're here. Thank you. If I may take your valise, sir. Oh, that's all right. That's my film case. I'll set it down right here. Mr. Stevens will be down directly. Yeah, we'll wait. Boy, the electrical line must pay off plenty. Uh-huh. This is a lovely house. Oh, an original painting by Van Houten. Oh, good evening. Do you like uh, my wife's portrait? Oh, good evening, Mr. Stevens. Your wife is a beautiful woman. Oh, thank you. Uh, she's out of town right now, Miss... Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Miss Williams, and this is Mr. Casey. Oh, yes, I spoke to you on the phone, Mr. Casey. Yes. Do you have any news of Laura? Yes, bad news. You mean Laura's hurt? No. Laura has run away with the money she collected for the city welfare fund. Oh, it's impossible. I don't believe well, it. Well, they had a pretty hard time convincing me, too, but can't argue about it anymore. The police found that Laura bought a flock of new clothes and luggage in a car, and then she disappeared. She did and I... I... Do what? I donated $300 to our fund myself. Huh? You're in good, smart company, Mr. Stevens. Quite a few people like to catch up with Laura. And I'd like your help. Well, what can I do? Well, answer some questions, if you will. You see, the way we figure, Laura was with you during her working day, and she might have dropped a hint as to where she was going. Nothing that I can remember, Mr. Casey. Oh, did she ever say she wished you were in California, we'll say, or Florida or someplace? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I... I know very little about her. Huh. There isn't anything you remember that could give us some lead. I'm afraid not, much as I'd like to. Well, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Steele. Well, if I think of anything, I'll call you, Mr. Casey. Yeah, thanks. You can reach me at the newspaper office. Or perhaps the police will catch her. Maybe. Yeah, but by that time, Laura Neely will have run through the money for the welfare fund. Shall we go, Annie? <laughs> visit was a complete bust. Well, I don't know about that. What do you mean? Stevens didn't know a thing. So he said. Come on, let's get into the car. Right. Here we are. Go ahead, Ann. Okay. Now, will you please tell me why you think Stevens knows something? Casey, I've got something I want to show you. Switch on the dashboard light. Huh? All right, here it is. Now, what do you think of this? Well, what a... Oh, a tube of lipstick. Well, look closer. Well, let's see it. All right, I still think it's lipstick. Of course, but it's strawberry lipstick. Get it? Strawberry, huckleberry, raspberry. What difference does it make? Oh, none to a man, I guess. But this is the lightest shade of lipstick made. It's used by very blonde women. Well, keep talking. Do you remember when I sat down on the couch? Well, I found this lipstick between the cushions. Uh, that shows that Laura was in Stephen's library recently. <laughs> Annie, you've got Laura on the brain since you met her... Lipstick could belong to any blonde woman. It might even be Mrs. Stevens. Didn't you notice that portrait of Stevens' wife? She's a brunette. Her shade would be deep red or purple. True enough, but Mrs. Stevens might have dozens of blonde friends. Stevens said his wife was out of town, didn't he? Well, none of her friends would come around when she's gone. Ah, I still can't see it, though, Annie. All right, let's say for the sake of argument that I agree that Laura was in Stevens' library. She was. All right, does that make any sense? What did she be doing there? Oh, she might be in love with Stevens. She's in love with well, all right. Well, let's see. Now, suppose suppose he were planning to run out with Laura. So what does he do? He lets Laura steal the ten grand which she collected for the welfare fund? Think, Annie. Stevens is a very rich man. Ten thousand bucks doesn't mean very much to him. Why would he let Laura take the money and get the police after them? Well, when you put it that well, way... Well, sure, those are the facts. Stevens is no dope. How do you get around that? Well, I don't know, but I do know that this is Laura's lipstick. How? What are your reasons? When something is true, you don't need reasons. Oh. And I know this is Laura's lipstick. And if we could get back into Stephen's home, I'll bet that you'd find more clues that she was there. <laughs> oh, what am I supposed to do? Tell Stephen that I think he's harboring Laura and search the house? Or shall I pull the gag about reading the gas meter? All right, get sarcastic if you want to. But I'd get into that house if I wanted to find Laura. Mm, well, we, we could wait till Stephen's left the house. 
Then I could walk in and tell the butler I left my film case behind. Yeah, that's it. That'll give us a chance to examine the library again. Hmm. Well, okay, Annie. But I'm doing this for one reason. Oh? What reason? Your intuition was right once about Laura. And even if it's a million to one against you being right again, I'm not leaving myself open. <laughs> That was Stevens in the car which left. Yeah, I got a good look at him. He's gone. Okay. Good evening. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Casey, but Mr. Stevens left the house shortly after you did. Oh, well, that, that's all right. I didn't come back to see Mr. Stevens. You see, I, I missed my film case, and I think I left it here. Film case? Yeah, uh, yeah, that square leather case with a leather strap that you want to take. You know? Oh, yes, I remember, sir. Will you come in? Yeah, thank you. After you, Annie. Mm, yes, sir. You must have left the film case in the library, sir. I'll look. I'll just come along, pick it up. Here's the library, sir. Do you uh, remember where you put it? Well, it's too big to miss. It might be on the other side of the couch. Uh, uh, not here. Do you remember what I did with it, Annie? Well, uh, you, uh, you might have shoved it under the couch. Oh. Uh, no, it isn't there. Hey, what's that over there? Hmm? It wasn't here before. Oh, no, no, that's too big. That's Mr. Stevens's overnight bag, sir. Oh. But I placed it there after you left. Oh, I see. Could anybody have picked up the film case after I left? Well, it's hardly possible, sir, but uh, I'll ask the maid if you wish. Yes, thank you very much. I'd appreciate it if you I'll want. only be a few moments, sir. You take as long as you want. <laughs> well, Annie, did you find anything more? Yep. Come here, what? Casey. What? Near the couch. What do you mean? I don't see anything. Smell. Huh? You mean the perfume? Yeah. And it's strongest near the couch. Laura sat here recently. Some more intuition, Annie, or some logical reason this time. Look, I'm sure, Casey. It's faint, but I'm sure it's twilight in Paris. Laura's perfume. I'm sure she was here. Ah, just might fit in at that, Annie. Uh, Annie, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What? Well, first I'll take you home. Then I've got to prepare a speech to make to a tough guy. And then I've got to buy a can of paint. <laughs> You're late, Tom. I had to be careful driving up here, Paula. Where's Laura? In the cabin. Did she give you any trouble? Everything went like we planned. She came to the house with some papers from you, and I offered her a drink. That stuff you put in the liquor kept her out cold. And nobody could possibly have seen you put her in the car? Nobody. All the servants had the day off. Fine. All your friends, Paula. I must have told a million people that my wife is out of town for a few days. This summer cabin of ours is certainly out of town. Where's the blue convertible roadster you drove up? In back of the fence, naturally. It can't be seen from the road. Every policeman in the state is looking for that car. Tom, how did it go in the city? Did the police accept the fact that Laura bought the car and the clothes with the welfare fund money? They swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. <sighs> the blonde wig was an inspiration, Paula. Buying stuff in Laura's name wouldn't have been enough if you didn't fill her general description. So they accepted the story exactly as we built it up. Yes, I have from that newspaper photographer, Casey, that the police are convinced it was Laura who bought the car and the clothes with the fund money. Good. And now when Laura is found dead... Paula! We have to kill the girl. After all, it's not her fault that I carelessly left my second set of books on the desk. What difference whether it's her fault or not? She did see the books, and she does know that you didn't pay nearly a million dollars income tax. I wish I hadn't listened to you, Paula. Don't be a fool, Tom. They'll send you to jail and think of me. But to kill. Look, Paula, that's murder. Tom, we can't take chances. If you had to pay fines on the million you held out, we'd be ruined. And you'd go to jail. Oh, no, Tom, I couldn't stand the disgrace. Well, I don't like it, Are Paula. you falling for her baby face, too? Well, I'll take care of her. I've got too much to lose if... Tom, what's that? All right, put up your hands, both Tom! of you. Tom! Sergeant Hahn, State Police. Keep them covered, boys. Look in the back room. A guy named Casey said we'd find a beautiful blonde around here. We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. You know the old adage, the pot calls the kettle black? Well, maybe you think it's natural for all cooking utensils to become scorched, blackened, and hard to clean. Well, that's because you've been using ordinary pots and pans. Now, when you use Fire King Oven Glass, that just doesn't happen. Fire King Oven Glass is a special non-porous surface that's literally mirror smooth. It doesn't absorb baking stains or odors, and it's amazingly easy to clean. And because you bake, serve, and store leftovers all in the same Fire King dish, you save hours of kitchen drudgery. Now, you'll find a wide variety of Fire King casseroles, pie plates, and utility dishes at chain and department stores and wherever household glass is sold. 
you'll be surprised at the amazingly low prices. Be sure to ask for Fire King Oven Glass by name. Fire King is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. I'm just about to, to bust with curiosity. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Goodness, Annie, doesn't your feminine intuition supply the answer? All right. So I was wrong about Laura. I know that Mr. and Mrs. Stevens are under arrest and that Laura is coming back with the money for the city welfare fund. Casey, Miss Williams, here what? comes Laura now. Oh, Mr. Casey, oh. you saved my life. <laughs> you got the police to Stevens' cabin just in time. Well, I could kiss you. Uh, oh, well... Uh... I was just getting ready to like you. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't know what I'm saying, Miss Williams. Oh, I sure thought I was a goner when I laid there tied up and Mr. and Mrs. Stevens talking about killing me. And everybody thought I had stolen the fun money. Except Mr. Casey, of course. <laughs> well, there were moments when I had my doubts. But to give credit where it's due, it was Anne who spotted the lipstick and the perfume motor in Stevens' house. Which started you off on a train of thought. Sure. That and the fact that when we came back with a phony excuse, I saw that Stephen's bag was packed for a trip. Yeah. Well, so I decided to see where he went. And that reminds me, when you left me, you said that you had to prepare a speech for a tough guy That's and right. buy a can of paint. Now, what did you mean? Well, I knew that we'd make Stephen suspicious if we followed in a car, so I had to get a plane. Now, who would you say is the toughest guy in the world, Annie? <laughs> a city editor. That's right, Burke. Well, I got our city editor to authorize the use of our news plane. And once I had that, I needed a can of paint to mark the top of Stevens' car so we could follow it. Oh, I see. A cub reporter phoned the airport when Stevens left. Well, we spotted the marks on Stevens' car from the air and followed him to his summer cabin in the woods. And from above, we could see the blue convertible hidden from the road. So I knew that Laura was there. Well, how'd you let the police know? Annie, have you forgotten? Our new Morning Express plane is equipped with two-way radio. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, there's your story, Annie. You better get back to the office with it. Oh, uh, there are a lot of things which I don't understand yet. Huh? Uh, how about coming up to the office while I write the story, Casey? Uh, just to help a slow-witted pal. Well, sure. Oh, Miss Williams, I don't think you're slow-witted at all. <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist, and tonight's story was written by Milton Kramer. Hunger and starvation are the enemies of civilization and democracy. It's up to every American, man, woman, and child, to save a little food each day. In that way, the people of Western Europe can be helped in their fight for decency and freedom. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>